Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this virtual fireside chat, Do It Yourself or Managed SD1, How to Manage Your Network in the Hybrid One Era. We are very happy to have our speakers here with us. So firstly, we have um, Nisha Corona, Corana, Senior Director ICT of Frost and Sullivan, and he will be moderating the session. So hi, hi Nishal. Hi there. And we have um, Chris Rezentes, Director of Product Management, Asia Pacific of Lumen. Um, so hi, Chris. And um, next up, we have um, Anil Sharma, Chief Technology Officer, Lead of PepsiCo Inc. Um, we have another panelist, but he will probably will be joining us later. So um, that will be Abhijit Chagravati, Vice President, Infrastructure Services of Axis Bank. We hope you guys enjoy the session and I shall now pass the mic over to Nishal and he will take it. Thank you very much and, and welcome Chris, welcome Anil and welcome to all the people who are listening to this right now. So I think, I think it's a very interesting topic because uh, last few years we've been talking about digital transformation and that's been a topic right i think i've, I've done n number of sessions moderations panel around the world uh so so the fact about the role the networks will play is not new uh definitely what's happened over the last one year and especially the last few months has a conversation completely changed about it, it's not about whether digital is the way forward or not. The conversation is about, do we have the right infrastructure? Do we have the right technologies to make it happen, right? Do we have the right tools and uh, platforms to make, make what, what we want happen? And, and it's become a business conversation. It's not really uh, only an IT conversation. So what I'm gonna do over the next six, one hour is, is pick the brains of Chris and Anil to really get a perspective on how they see uh, things shaping up in the SD WAN space. Uh, again, I, I won't say it's absolutely new. It's been a topic of conversation the last few years now. But how do we really see this shaping up, right? So let me let me get Chris and uh, Anil's opening remarks straight away. And my question to them would be this: How do you really see the IT landscape changing, right? How do you really see the uh, the the whole I mean, I mean, we know the business has changed. We know we're living in a complete geopolitical chaos right now. Uh, but what do you really see from an IIT landscape changing? And, and what role or what benefit do you think is really SD-WAN bringing on the table? So maybe, Chris, if you would want to go first, uh, and then we pass it on to Andrew to get a perspective. OK. Uh, sure, Nichal, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> you raise a very good question here in terms of the technology and, and what's happening in that IT space. There's a lot of convergence happening amongst various uh, product towers when you look at the technologies occurring from network to security to even cloud and IT uh, capabilities. Uh, in addition to that you're looking at more players in the space uh, you don't necessarily have to go with any one provider for any one solution if it's a firewall for example you need it's not having to go after the security company anymore you can still look towards a network provider or you know even a cloud provider as well to obtain your services so there's a lot more ability out there to get these services and there's a lot more commercial flexibility in the models that are being deployed for all, with all of the new technology going out there as well. So it, it's it's quite exciting. I think you're going to see over the next probably the next two to five to ten years quite a lot of change uh, when you talk about uh, a lot of the capabilities of virtualization. You're seeing these uh, the hardware that used to have to be deployed for all these devices or for all these services now becoming virtualized uh, for customers. Uh, so that helps to reduce, not just in terms of uh, cost, but also the scale of networks and, and those the deployments have to go out for hardware. Um, you're also looking at, you know, in terms of uh, capabilities, in terms of deploying ser services and applications to the edge. That's a big uh, message going out there today. And all of this ultimately resides on the SD-WAN base as a base platform. So you're seeing, uh, it's very exciting, I think, with what we see in the SD-WAN world that's occurred over the last three or four years and what's coming next that's going to be built on top of that, all the services that built up over the top. 
Um, technology is what's driving it all, Nichelle, and it's um, it's an exciting place to be right now. So. And and I think you started off a brilliant point about convergence, and I think that's what it's a lot about, the convergence of uh, tech and business, the convergence. I mean, we, we started talking about IT and business convergence, and we spoke about IT and OT convergence, and we spoke about cloud convergence, and now you're talking about convergence of all technologies, right? Uh, but let, let's yeah. hear Anil's thoughts on, on that. He, I mean, he comes with a very different perspective and, and a different role altogether. So Anil, maybe let's let's hear you on, on your point on how do you see, what benefits do you think SD-WAN is really bringing on the table? And what's really changing in the whole IT landscape? So, you know, uh, the current situation, uh, you know, there are a lot of things being driven by the current situation, you know. Uh, and I think none of us have ever experienced this kind of situation. Sure. And for God's sake, we should not experience again in our lifetime. You know, so if you yeah. see the current situation is driving the way, you know, working across businesses, geographies, continent and whatnot, you know, it is you know, the worldwide problem, let me put it in this way. The new way of working, you know, and that's how I think, you know, will require IT infrastructure can be accessed from anywhere, anytime. And from any device, you know, you may you may see, you know, some organization were struggling, you know, when suddenly, you know, the offices were closed that they don't have tools, they don't have technology, you know, for their employees to operate from home, for example. So that's what I'm thinking, you know, that it require anywhere, anytime and any device, you know, uh, and continue to be secured. You know, uh, security is another thing which is, you know, popping up and you know, going to create challenges for all of us. So uh, this require basically, and that is how I think, you know, that you can dynamically, you know, upside or downside, you know, based on your requirement, business needs, you know, in place of, you know, having your old, you know, capital and because you cannot plan so many things in advance, you know, for such kind of situation. So that basically is forcing organization, you know, to adopt the model of, you know, pay as a use model in place of, you know, buying and and keeping things ideal or indirectly you know forcing you know companies to go cloud or you know do virtualization or you know do uh, things which can help them in uh, you know upsiding and downsizing depending upon you know the requirement conditions and challenges that's how i see and uh, you know we we've been talking about you know certain virtualization technology like sd wan or cloud for for long time but all of a sudden you know it, it's as you pointed out earlier it become a necessity now, you know, it's not no more like newer technology to be adopted, rather it is technology forcing us, you know, to be adopted and then, you know, move fast as, as fast as you can, you know, move forward. So I see, you know, uh, uh, SDBAN, of course, has been talked for a long time, you know, uh, but uh, uh, the adoption of SDBAN is not as, you know, as great as it should be based on, you know, the, the value it adds. You know, maybe we can talk about value down the line, but that's how I see, you know, uh, the environment changing, you know, from end user organization perspective, not as a service provider, but from end user organization perspective. Excellent. So you, you mentioned a very, few very interesting points there, and you, you started this whole thing by anytime, anywhere, any device organization, right? And I think that is the future, right? Where we're talking about, uh, I, I used to talk a lot about collaborative organizations, agile organizations, whatever fancy name you want to give it. But the, at exactly. the end of the day, it's about building an organization which can really work across geographies, 24 by 7 if required, and, re and really be, be across platforms and devices, right? So, Chris, Absolutely. that brings me to my next question to you. And, and the question is more pertinent to SD-WAN now. While we're talking about these kind of organizations, right? Who do you think is SD-WAN really applicable to, right? Which organizations can really drive the value of SD-WAN? Why are they in their ambition to build this truly collaborative, agile organization, right? Who do you think is SD-WAN really, really relevant to? Yeah, Nichel, it's another great question. I, it might be easy for some folks to actually say that you can look at it from a scale perspective and say a large enterprise with a large network, it would be ideal for them to uh, leverage an outsource partner to do to do the work for them, uh, but that could be a, a very uh, it, it could be easily mistaken that that type of company needs it because that type of company may actually have the funding 
to have a very large resource, a group of resources that can do it internally. So um, my, uh, my two cents on this would be, I, I think uh, it would depend, the, the, the defining factor would depend on the internal resources for that given company, not necessarily on the size of the enterprise company, whether it's large or small, it depends on, do you have that resource internally that is knowledgeable enough with that technology, can manage it and execute on the managed capabilities that come with that, with SD-WAN, regardless of which vendor it is or which SD-WAN solution you use, you, you need to have somebody to be able to manage it because the great thing about technology is that it makes it user-friendly. So certainly more people managing do-it-yourself type of approach but it also gives you a lot more capability, a lot more options and all these bells and whistles that perhaps you don't know how to use it or what the best method of using it, in which case then you might need to be better off leveraging or outsourcing to that, that third party to help you with not just network or security, but it could be with your SD-WAN rollout and managing your, your network services. Um, the other thing I would look at too is you know, what benefits do you derive from outsourcing? If, if you're only looking at it from an SD-WAN perspective, maybe it makes sense. Okay, I can manage that internally. But uh, if you're looking at, hey, I also need to account for my transport I need, plus the managed service, plus security, plus whatever cloud capabilities, it could make sense that, hey, maybe it is better you know, financially, economically, to be outsourcing the whole thing to one person uh, that can manage that whole scope of requirements for SDM. So, uh, bottom line, I think uh, it'll really depend on the resources you have internally to determine whether you can uh, manage that SDM internally or whether it's necessary to outsource. Yeah. Excellent. So, so what I hear you say is not really a function of size and scale of the organization. There's no right answer there. The answer is probably depending on whether you have the skills, the capabilities, the resources to manage this. Is, is that what I hear you say? Okay. So Anil, I mean, I mean, now now you've been on the other, right. you're on the other side of, of the implementations, right? You in your role, uh, I'm sure you you have experience, or and with your peers, you talk a lot more about the challenges that really come in there. So if you can share with us, uh, what are the ground level realities in terms of challenges in, in implementing these? What are the blind spots that come uh, when you're trying to implement these technologies, right? So so please share your, it, it's gonna be great value add for all the listeners to see uh, where, where the challenges really lie. Uh, yeah, so it's a very fancy name in terms of the technology per se, but whatever sophistication these technology bring, you know, it gives you a lot of challenge, you know, and while you are, deciding the solution and implementing the solution it's not easy you know it's you know uh, people think that you know uh, uh, moving uh, to virtual environment moving to cloud is very easy but uh, guys you know as an end user organization i can say it, you know, it is as complicated as you know anything else uh, there is some eco uh, suddenly started not sure huh? okay yeah, so uh, yeah so based on you know uh, uh, I have I have experienced you know two things. One is where where we decided you know the solution we try you know coming up designing our own uh, you know uh, set of solution and, and implementing it, uh, and then we have miserable experience in that. And then another experience I have you know is where we we given it to a vendor uh, who is providing us the network services you know to deploy an SDN solution and then make it running for us you know on a on a large, not on not in larger scale, but on a smaller scale, like 70, 80 locations, uh, uh, for that matter. So what I've seen as a challenge is, you know, per se, based on uh, what uh, experience we have, you know, a couple of things. One is uh, you have to do, uh, you know, detailed inventory analysis before you plan any implementation. Meaning by, you know, adopted solution uh, may be compatible with the legacy network, you know, because uh, your both network uh, may run for some time as legacy as well as you know the SD WAN because you cannot do whole location uh, and convert them into SD WAN overnight. You know so that is uh, the change will from legacy you know to SD WAN will be gradual in nature. So you have to so inventory analysis in terms of what kind of equipment you are having in legacy environment and whether they are compatible or not. 
is very important and critical you know for the success of sd wan deployment for that so that is one thing the second piece you know again on uh, uh, this is i have seen that you know uh, uh, I, i although chris talked about uh, resources you know uh, maybe if you don't have internal resources to manage and operate then um, it's better to look for you know managed services partner or managed service and mom and then doing it on your own self because it's not easy guys you know uh, 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 for that matter so that is the second piece which i will say and the third thing uh, which i say is network connectivity selection you know uh, when i say network connectivity selection meaning by you may have multi uh, uh, network uh, solution which you can adopt you know as part of sd wan but consider you know uh, multiple service provider wherever possible so that you have you know dual network service provider so that they provide you diverse you know path to your location so that if one fails you know you are still able to continue your business you know uh, so that is the second piece which i will say you know based on uh, the challenge you know there may be locations in certain part of uh, country or office location because where you cannot have you know the multiple choices but wherever it's possible go for that so that is the second thing which i will say uh, or the third thing sorry and the last uh, point on the challenge i will say is uh, the quality of service you know it is not very simple thing you know to decide and adopt uh, for that matter uh, as you know uh, you know uh, mpls provide end to end quality of service you know but on the other hand if you talk about uh, internet lease line or uh, broadband or you know those kind of connectivity they may not provide you you know end to end you know uh, quality of service you can prioritize the traffic but you will not have end to end qs so defining you know i will call it a persona of a location you know and then persona of your application which you are going to use over that network is very important and critical so that is another thing which i put as a challenge now uh, you ask one more uh, thing uh, you know in terms of blind spot uh, there are few blind spot which i the way i think you know uh, is one of them is uh, uh, i i think uh, the wireless network in the respective location that becomes your blind spot uh, and the reason is you cannot you know based on whatever tools and technology you adopted you may not be able to monitor you know uh, the end use Uh, each and every access point you know uh, the behavior and then the utilization and what so that is one area of blind spot which you need to consider second is uh, i will say cloud uh, you know or multi cloud you know for that matter you know you cannot uh, uh, you know install uh, monitoring tools and you know those kind of stuff if you are having you know uh, platform as a service or you know in, uh, you know those kind of uh, saas you know a kind of application uses so then that become another blind spot for you because you don't know exactly what is happening at the server level on the service provider and you know if you are getting and using you know pairs and ses kind of application in your end so that is second piece which i think as a blind spot the third piece which i see is you know end point itself you know if you are running a large organization you know it's very difficult to monitor remote side this given you know the scale of organization you may have and the large number of remote sites across uh, the globe so end point monitoring managing them again become a blind spot you know from a network perspective because something someone sitting in in, in remote corner of uh, a country can you know impact you uh, because of you know uh, you will not be able to monitor at each and every end point device level so those are few things which i can think of you know uh, blind spot per se and you know uh, you know some of those inputs in terms of my experience is on 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 sd excellent points i think i think you raised up a number of points for chris to address but hey abhijit i see you. Uh, can you hear us uh yes i can yes i still have the okay. with my computer so i dialed in yeah i tried to do some in indian parlance it's called jugad but it didn't work so <laughs> i thought let me yeah. go back to my mobile your voice is, is yeah. still a bit feeble so you may have to speak a little louder for us but we can hear you yeah is it okay now is it okay yes, now yes much better abhi thank you so abhi just to bring you on page we were discussing about the challenges right because uh, i mean while we talked about sd wan and we talked about the benefits that it can bring uh what we would like to hear from you abhi ji is is we heard anil's perspective on the challenges that 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 probably exist with sd wan deployments right 
Uh, we'd like to hear your perspective on the same thing. What are the challenges that you believe uh, are could be there in an HDMI deployment, and uh, what are the blind spots that, that you really see there? Uh, so I was listening to Anil, and my my experience is exactly the opposite. Uh, exactly the opposite, 360 degrees opposite. In fact, uh, yeah. So we, uh, you know, we had a traditional uh, MPLF network. We continue to have. Okay. So we are losing you a bit uh, again. Uh, hello. Is it better now? Much better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I said that we had a traditional network. We are a bank, the third largest private bank in India. Uh, we have approximately about 5,000 odd branches. And, uh, you know, we had these problems of network management because in a, in a large enterprise, especially when an enterprise is evolving, uh, the, the thought of standardizing is pretty low. So you have all different makes and models of equipments on your network. You know, so you have Cisco's, you have HP's, you have uh, uh, a few others also. These are the two that, you know, I've named on the, the Junipers, right? You have the routers, you have the LAN switches, you have the Wi-Fi access points. And uh, now when you look at the management of this complete network, so one is it, what do you do on the complete network management, right? And... Yes, there is a challenge. I do agree with Anil that managing the complete network infrastructure is definitely a challenge. Now, majority of this challenge somehow in my observation lies in the WAN side rather than the LAN piece of it, right? So the LAN piece of it, you connect a switch, it kind of works pretty smoothly. The crunch is always on the WAN as to what is the bandwidth you have, how is the bandwidth being utilized, who is utilizing the bandwidth at what point in time? Do you want to get some trends? Uh, in in and, and you know, majority of the enterprises like we have, we have got dual links in our branches so that if one fails, the other takes up. Uh, now, in 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 that case, you know, it is important that you have a symmetric bandwidth. Your your backup bandwidth has to be equal to your primary bandwidth. If that is not the case. How do you do application prioritization? How do you ensure that the business critical applications are routed on the available bandwidth and non-business critical applications are kind of, you know, held back for the moment? Uh, monitoring becomes a challenge, even on the traditional network. You know, you have different sets of equipment. You need to have a decent capability NMS tool to be capable of monitoring, reporting, alerting. Uh, and then mostly, you know, in networks, uh, you know, like, like, like you know, in a network, if, if, a, if, if a primary link versus a secondary link, now if the primary link is down, I am happy because I know the traffic will switch over to the secondary link. But if the primary link has a service degrade, you have a problem. Because the traffic now readily does not switch over. So clearly, I, mean, I, 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 I think you're talking about a good point there. And I can see two thought processes coming there, right? One, you're talking about the technology angle of things, right? And the other, you're talking about the management angle of things, right? So clearly, there's a, yeah. there's a technology. And I can what I hear you say, yes, there is value in the technology. We need SD-WAN. But there could, there's a management part, which could be probably more difficult given your endpoints, given your architecture, given your cloud deployments, right? So maybe, Anil, let me go back to you with this question, right? Uh, when, you, when you're when deciding the overall landscape of things, right, is it is it the technology which is really driving the management, or you see the management challenge with, and based on which you leave it to the vendor or service provider to decide which technology to bring in for you? How, what is, what is the process to go about this, right, uh, between the technology and the management part? And, and any examples from your own experience would be great to hear from. Yeah, so uh, when you talk about technology, I'm assuming you're talking about technology or adopting for SD WAN uh, per se. Okay? So uh, when you talk about you know management, you know the technology and architecture of your SD WAN dictate 
what kind of management tool and solution you have to adopt because there are you know uh, 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 well defined management tools which works on you know the selected sd wan technology per se you know and i will give you one example of you know based on my experience you know so uh, so architecture the technology which you are adopting dictate you know which tools of man- you know you use for management and and what level of you know management you will be able to adopt or you know do out of that you know, i'm giving an example uh, of uh, 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 i have a you know um, business in uh, south africa basically which has like uh, 96 offices uh, in that country plus neighboring countries you know uh, here uh, uh, we have adopted uh, you know I, i was trying to avoid you know <laughs> the solution you know but uh, just to say you know uh, for experience per se we have adopted 40 net you know 40 gate solution uh, to be our sd wan solution based on our service provider you know recommendation so here we have gone uh, that we have a single service provider who is providing me the network connectivity plus is providing me sd wan solution and managing it for me time so a uh, typical location you know will have a 14 uh, gate device and then on top of that we are having 40 gate analyzer and 40 gate manager and more so my point coming back to is for management per se if i have decided you know to use 40 net solution you know i have to go for 40 gate you know manager you know for managing my you know sd wan part you know so this is so coming back to the point maybe there are technologies available which are open source and those kind of thing but you know it is uh, the technology which you are adopting and you know the architecture which you are adopting you know uh, influence your decision to go for you know the management tool and the solutions which you will be using for management per se uh, continuation on that you know then comes you know how you are deploying it you know what kind of profiling which i was talking about or persona you are creating you know for locations applications and what not and then you have you know the management layer on top of that you know managing and running you know uh, the the whole reporting uh, for you from uh, the sd wan utilization perspective so that is what that's how i think you know uh, from uh, technology and management perspective excellent now it's maybe the same question to you before i go to chris is do you also look at this way do you do you we talk about technology angle and we talk about management from both the, the tools angles and the service provider angle how how does really your decision making work and and what what is really deciding uh your your architecture and your way forward okay so uh what we did uh nishal is kind of we kind of went a bit granular in our approach now when we were evaluating services and products we kind of looked at uh, when we went we definitely wanted to move to the van for sure okay there were definite uh, benefits that we could see that the technology and the platform would bring to us and we were evaluating right now while evaluating we kind of uh, defined three to four major pillars for our evaluation one was what are the sd wan features that we are looking across what is it that matters to us i mean not available i mean not really what is available globally but as an enterprise what is it that we need from the sd wan as sd wan features second was what is it that we need from a security from security and advanced security features third what do we need from an automation and orchestration perspective because that improves efficiency that kind of helps reduce a lot of your uh, manpower it improves your turn up times fourth is the management monitoring and reporting what are the features that we need there right and and basis this we kind of evaluated uh four odd products i will not want to name them and then uh decided to go ahead with one right and and we kind of and we did a poc the whole evaluation and the poc kind of took us about 6 to 8 months time because we were evaluating four different oems along with their service providers uh, for the services took us 6 to 8 months time but we thought we did a very good job there and, and we are happy that we did that excellent so chris i think on advanced level of analytics reporting and you've got to list that down that this is what i need You know, so actually, and then be able to kind of take it up you have laid down the ground for my next question actually very well you, you 
brought up a very pertinent topic and that's that's for you chris now as abhijit was sharing his experience right that going granular deciding the what you want to achieve in your experience how do you really define the roi that an hd brand technology is bringing on the table right and then abhijit and and uh, earlier anil were also talk, talking about that you need the right implementation the tools the platforms the many other things so and and as a provider right how do you define these best practices so one how would you define the roi before you purchase the poc and then finally how would you define the best practices to really have an effective implementation and maybe overcome a lot of the challenges that anil and abhi shared earlier hmm <clears throat> uh thanks nicho i i think ultimately when you're defining roi <clears throat> and a successful roi and maximum value we probably need to go back to what anil touched on at the very beginning which is the dynamic capabilities and application performance honestly there are a lot of customers i think when sd wan came out got excited about oh i can save cost because i don't need my vpn and so everything was about looking at the cost savings aspect of it and they lost sight of the value of the solution itself which was the applications and the, and the dynamic capabilities that you get you know some of these supporting thousands of different application policies excuse me which will then provide all of the different capabilities you need to manage your applications and your it infrastructure so that to me would be number 1 like as a enterprise customer coming in look at what is going to give you that best value in terms of your performance and managing your applications internally okay the cost savings that'll come with it you'll get that eventually down the line but ultimately what you're going to get in terms of the benefits of value with applications and the performance and other dynamic capabilities you get with the the SDN solution will be far superior than what you're operating on in a legacy network okay now when we talk about how to evolve into this uh into the, like how do we know which solution to go with which which vendor with i think it's important that c- customers enterprise customers take a step back cuz in, in today's world you still get within a company architecture that group that has the CSO and you got the CIO and you got the chief network operator officer and are they actually talking to one another I mean, cuz what we're seeing as we alluded to earlier is the convergence of the technology coming together so if you've got a a strong internal strategy that encompasses all three of those then you're going to get the maximum value for your solution here because you'll be able to look at potentially bundling services instead of your CSO going out and buying firewall services from somebody and your CIO going and doing his cloud strategy and your network being run separate from all of those uh, being considered uh, you can now consider that all in one and by bundling those solutions you do have providers out there that will that will give you that value the maximum value in return that you want for a network a managed service the security the cloud hosting capabilities you can get all of that through one not, not that you want just one service provider but you could get a lot of it through one and and return and see the returns financially when you're bundling those services together now i i would say that in today's world you don't necessarily want to put all your eggs in one basket so there there's a limit to that of putting it all into one but certainly if you're looking at narrowing your selection down to one or two providers that would satisfy the criteria the other thing i would point out is in terms of what we heard from abijit and anil was on proof of concept i think those are very critical or transformation workshops we encourage all of our customers to hold those whether it's a transformation workshop or a proof of concept which means you know service providers in fact i think predominantly in the industry today everybody would be offering free proof of concepts that means you know deploying the cps out there testing it making sure that you're getting the right solution for your money um you do have there are some well 
Sir Chris, we are losing you a bit there. On most SD-WAN solutions, regardless of provider, are very similar. You know, Chris, are you there? Okay. Okay. I think we lost Chris for a second, but he on, on some yeah. very relevant points, right? He was talking about, uh, and he, he was referring to both the comments from Anil and Abhijit uh, on, on this. So, so Anil, just, just your final take before I move to the next set of questions on, on the SD-WAN deployment and best practices. Would you have a recommendation on the best practices uh, that, that could be implemented to really overcome the challenges that you mentioned earlier? No, so wherever I, I, I look at, not just talking about proof of concepts, things like that, that's a good best practice. But when it comes to deployment, which I think is what you're touching on, Nichelle, yeah. you, you can't rush those things. I think any customer will will tell you that's already deployed SD-WAN, that there, this is not something that can be done in one or two months. You've got to be very plan it very carefully and work closely with whoever is providing your underlay network or your cloud connectivity. There needs to be very close coordination and alignment to make sure that your business is not impacted as and when you're moving from a legacy network uh, model to what is now this futuristic SD-WAN model. Um, we work very closely, our, our teams internally for Lumen work very closely with customers to lay out that plan that with a technical design engineer and say, okay, this is when this this site, and typically it's based on a site uh, per, per site and based on what the customer feedback is in terms of, yes, that's an important site, we need that. It's gonna have these important critical applications. We need to make sure the network is, is stable and, and working properly there. That type of testing and planning needs to happen up front. It can't be rushed because uh, what you'll end up seeing is a, a negative impact or, or experience by the customer uh, in terms of onboarding SD-WAN. And, and that, sadly, that's that's happened to some customers out there. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, so now my next question would be this: Right, while uh, we work with with both the, the enterprises, the vendors, service providers across Asia Pacific. Each of these countries are very different in themselves, right? I mean, when I talk about emerging markets like Indonesia and Thailand, they're very different in, in Asia versus when we talk about Japan and China or versus when I'm talking about Singapore, Malaysia. Now, in this disparate environment, right, Chris, where do you see the majority of the different enterprises of the different countries in their SD-WAN deployments? How, how do you see them being different? And maybe then I will also uh, get to Abhijit and Anil to get their perspective of what they see in India. Uh, but Chris, over to you first. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I you know, SD WAN is still evolving. We're certainly further along now than we were four years ago as a market. Uh, I think that you know other regions like US and EMEA are probably a little bit further along than APAC. But we're seeing uh, some uptake now with the regional and local enterprise companies within Asia itself. Uh, looking at how yeah, how they may want to deploy SD-WAN and you know those that have been some of the laggards to to take on and, and investigate SD-WAN might actually benefit more because a lot of the bugs that were experienced early on are getting resolved already and I think you'll see that uh, that there's more options more enhancements it, it continues to evolve SD-WAN as a technical uh, solution offering in terms of you know who's going to be the best vendor, best, best option out there. I think within the within our enterprise space, I would say even globally, the large enterprise have caught on first and and have been probably aggressive moving into that. Whether it's do it yourself or with other service providers or, or vendors, the the mid mid markets and smaller probably a little bit slow to to add. Uh, to embrace the technology, but we are again seeing that pick up now. So, so Anand, would you see a similar trend in the peer group that you interact with? Is it a more of a large enterprise story as of now? No, I will not say that way. You know, it's not. I don't think you know uh, SD WAN is only for large or or it's not there for medium or small enterprises. 
you know uh, you have variety of solution you know which can be adopted based on your requirement i will say that you know uh, what i'm seeing is people are uh, experimenting right now let me put it in this way in place of you know whole heartedly jumping on to sd wan uh, uh, this is pre covid uh, time i will say you know. now uh, after covid you know i'm i'm very sure things are going to change and things are going to change because uh, the flexibility uh, the sd wan provides you is the now need of the hour you know so coming back uh, to your point i don't see this as a like large organization uh, solution only and not you know focusing on you know other other uh, type of organization the only thing you know which i want to add further you know uh, each and every organization who is planning to adopt you know it's it's just my suggestion is you know look into what is your need in place of what vendor is selling it to you it's not you know you go and then buy the fancy car and and having 1000 features and you are not planning to use like 900 features and you are end up paying for those 900 features you know so look for what you are looking you know what is the problem statement you have and what are you trying to address by adopting you know sd wan and cost should not be a consideration you know while you are talking about solution you will get cost reduction as an intangible benefit in other words i will not call it a tangible benefit as part of you know this whole reengineering of your network you know you look into what is the problem statement you are trying to address and then select the right solution you know that is the say you know and the another thing is if you are thinking of 100% outsourcing it don't think that way you know you need to still have where minimum skeleton of resources within your organization who understand technology who can get the work done with the help of vendor and service provider i will say that and i that brings me to interesting mm-hmm. use case uh, vijit and amgu this is for you uh, this is a question that got posed also by the audience a while back is is one of the benefits of the band is of course the the awareness right the apl- application awareness the ability to uh, manage uh, the the traffic in terms of whether it's business traffic whether it's social media traffic the ability to control the, those features which which are not earlier uh, but at the same time we're talking about a lot more uh, bring your own device we're talking about a lot more uh, end end points right uh, So the biggest question that any time comes up with this kind of thing is security right and and uh, under touched upon it a bit earlier but but to get your view as well uh how do you see what's your view on byod and sd wan first of all and i i i don't think uh, byod is a question but in terms of sd wan technology and and how do you how what's your experience in security management from that perspective Uh, see, uh, okay, fair. Acknowledge. So, uh, just a couple of things. I'll, I'll kind of try and break yeah, my responses. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll, I'll kind of break my responses so that I try and attempt to respond to this a bit more granularly. And uh, taking a cue from what I had said, and Anil also kind of uh, reiterated that first, look at what is your requirement. See, you don't need to buy everything. Okay. Look at what is your requirement. Point number two. is the solution that you are you know kind of evaluating or you would be evaluating does it offer you modular approach can you buy a few modules now and scale up as and when you need it otherwise you have a problem either we'll need to change the box or today you will need to buy something which you will not use for maybe a pretty long time so you've got to you've got to take a very careful look there as the man uh I'll again I'll not name the products but SD WAN does come with a full fledged next gen firewall incorporated and built in into the box what you've got to see what if, if you you've got to stay away from getting overwhelmed by it and check what in that next gen firewall do you need now if you need only access list do you actually need next gen firewall the answer may be no basic url filtering you don't need a next gen firewall okay the other thing that you've got to be careful about is the moment you turn up the next gen firewall uh configurations and capabilities it will take a hit on the throughput of your link uh basis the evaluations that i have done on a 100 meg link if you enable next gen firewall depending upon the product and the hardware that you use 
the throughput may drop to 100 to 90 megs to as low as 60 megs also so you've got to be careful what you need and what you don't need you've got to be careful about what you need now and what you will probably need five to seven years down the line because when you are investing you've got to be careful about at least five years right so security features in sd-wan are pretty well built the next gen firewalls are pretty advanced uh, the management consoles, the configuration, automation, orchestration are pretty advanced, right? And BYOD, uh, yes, has already settled in. The SD-WAN today, a Navi initial, also comes in with a SASE, the S-A-S-E, which means that even if you are on the cloud and you want to connect securely from the edge, you know, your SD-WAN equipment, if it is a SASE capable and SASE supporting architecture equipment, you can be rest assured that your security can be taken care of right at the edge. You don't need to have traffic coming on to your data center or to your cloud firewall to take a decision. You can take the decision at the edge. And that is where SASE comes into play. So. If you, if you are deploying SD-WAN for your remote offices or for your remote connections like the situation now, for your work from home, you may want to consider deploying SASE boxes along with the SD-WAN features. So your security is taken care of. You are not really bothered about what type of device connects. And if you want to be bothered about what type of device connects, you can actually build up a rule saying that these are the five MAC addresses which can access REST. Thank you. I don't know you well. Right, and, and you can build in uh, the amount of authentication within this assay tied up to your cloud or to your data center such that uh, you, know, you, you can be sure of that the traffic that is coming to you is a trusted traffic. It is not an untrusted traffic. Right. So Abhijit, actually you mentioned about what do we need now and what do we need in the future. And Chris, Chris also alluded to the car analogy right earlier that do we really need all the features? Yeah. So let's move to a more pertinent here and now question, which is the COVID, right? So in your experience, Anil, what really changed in the COVID environment and, and did it have any implication whatsoever in your SD-WAN strategy? A lot of things changed. You know, uh, I will say that you know, uh, we were not asserting because we have all capability. I think, I think, I think it was a very wrong question on my part. In terms of saying what has changed, uh, I should just ask you what all has changed. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, but the things which has you know, uh, you know we have to relook into is like you know we were having capability of you know employee working from home. We continue working from home, but we never looked into a possibility of you know that hundred percent your workforce move and work from home. You know, so from that perspective, we end up revisiting you know all our capacity connecting our, you know, VPNs and, you know, uh, data centers and whatnot, you know, from that perspective. That is one thing which we did. The second piece, you know, from coming back to your SD-WAN strategy perspective, I, I think, uh, you know, we will speed up now uh, SD-WAN adoption in certain uh, part of the world, uh, basically, uh, depending upon, you know, uh, the availability and, you know, uh, challenges which we face in recent time, you know, so that we can uh, be more flexible in terms of you know connecting to the network and then going out directly to the cloud so we're trying you know to to correlate rather or link our uh, cloud adoption strategy with sd wan adoption going forward so that you know we marry these two strategy and you know uh, adopt and deliver uh, these two in conjunction with each other so that's what i will say uh, there is a definite influence of uh, of uh, of uh, covid on that because uh, we have seen some uh, great features and advantage of uh, cloud uh, during this period. You know, we were able to build capability and you know capacity. You know, in, in few hours and few minutes, kind depending upon what you were looking for. So that has given us you know ample opportunity of you know uh, fast tracking you know our cloud adoption and indirectly it will help also in adopt you know uh, fast tracking of our SD WAN you know strategy also. So that's what I will say. Right. Abhijit, same question to you before I move to the next one. Uh, what what was the impact of COVID in, in, in SD-WAN? 
Okay, so one thing that as an enterprise that possibly changed in every enterprise is the deployment and adoption of collaboration solutions. Now, whether you use WebEx, whether you use Microsoft Teams, uh, whether you use Zoom, there are, there are a plethora of collaboration solutions that are available, right? This needed to be deployed, rolled out, and the network be ready for the traffic coming in, right? I think I would say that in, in, in my organization, I think we would we consider ourselves very fortunate because we had a large deployment of SD-WAN already. And we went ahead with Microsoft Teams as our, uh, you know, choice for the unified communication platform. Because of the SD-WAN capability, change management became easy. Why? Because you could use automation and orchestration. You could use configuration template. You could schedule changes. Just imagine that you needed to do, you know, make configuration changes to about 5,000 routers. Now, if you had to do that manually, logging in into the router and doing it, uh, I mean, you can imagine what effort it takes. sd one being there, with the automation and orchestration platform being there, you kind of design the configuration template, test it on few boxes, works, build the template, schedule night 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., update into 5,000 routers, and you are done. Right, so... Application traffic prioritization. Now, Microsoft Teams video calls, like the call that we are in right now, this is a real-time traffic. You've got to have definitive quality of service and prioritization of traffic so that this traffic gets across. Right? So building up quality of service queues, I think that helped. We kind of looked at what can we do for work from home, uh, whereas work from home, there are various technologies ranging from VPN to cloud-based connectivities and solutions, but we are a bank. Uh, so we have a mix and we have a challenge. Security continues to be a challenge for us, and that's of paramount importance, right? So for the teams and departments and individuals who are extremely critical, like the treasury, like uh, the core banking teams, we actually went ahead and put the SASE boxes at their homes with a broadband and a mobile SIM card as a backup into that box so that we ensured one is that availability of connectivity. Second, we ensured security so that no one fools around. Third, we ensured that we have complete monitoring capability till the end point so we know what's happening. It is as if the user is sitting inside the office LAN irrespective of where he or she is working from. So I think a plethora of changes that came and we kind of adopted to it it's now became become the way of life, so I think this will continue. So actually, obviously, that's that's a good point. Anil, so the question, right? While we're building this together, while we're building this technology, tools, platforms, taking care of security, convergence to cloud, there's so many things, right? Which we're talking about. Uh, a question which popped up from the audience as well, and that's that's in my mind as well. Is are there any hidden costs that you see when you're doing the plan planning? Right? You, you mentioned about picking up the right features that you want, et cetera. But are there costs that you believe that are not seen when you start off this journey and, and maybe you want to sound them off uh, at, at a stage? Yeah, definitely there are hidden costs also. And I will give one example without quoting. You I, know, I, the, I can see Abhijit smiling already. So I, I'm assuming he's, he is echoing your thoughts, but please, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, there are definitely hidden costs, you know. and. Uh, I will not name the technology, but I will give an example. You know, so there is a technology, you know, which uh, uh, you know have uh, the cost of license or uses, whatever you call it, based on the bandwidth of your circuit. So uh, and uh, so, if you buy say 10 meg, uh, you know, license, and on actually you are using a smaller capacity circuit in the location, you end up paying for 10 meg for each location. Per se, you know, just giving an example. I'm. I don't want to name the technology and company because you know it will go in a different way. So the, there are a lot of such hidden costs. I have given only one example. There are a lot of such hidden costs. You know, where uh, you will have uh, to pay without using it. This is one example. Another example is, uh, you know, some of the device and uh, some of the solution dictate you know to put a hardware box on your site, and that hardware box may come in combination of you know what kind of network connectivity you can have, what number of ports it offers, 
you know, etc., etc. So you have to select those boxes based on your current requirement and maybe some future growth in place of you know buying you know one t-shirt size you know for all location you may end up you know having unnecessary paying extra cost than what you needed so just to give an example if uh, you are you may have a small location where you will never have say more than two circuit connectivity primary and secondary or you divide your workload between you know mpls or internet or two internet and whatnot so select the solution based on what you need in place of theoretically that you may be putting you know a, a 10 different kind of network solution in a remote location which is not going to happen for example you know so uh, then if you don't follow that guideline you may end up paying extra cost which you may not even you know think uh, you know in in, in a normal term and uh, each and every extra uh, whether it's a software license or it's a hardware box or a component in hardware box you know cost you directly uh, one time cost depending upon the model which you have adopted or recurring cost you know and then and then you know additional cost associated with that okay okay same mm -hmm. question over to you abhijit any hidden costs that did you uh, experience so you want to sound yeah, people so off? a couple of things yes yes so see you've got to be very very careful on understanding the cost built up structure in an fd van so the first thing that i would say that uh, in 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 contradiction to the traditional networks or the technology which is a hardware based technology where you buy a box here actually you buy software licenses and you've got to be careful about the licenses that you buy what all does this license cost entail as services for you whereas in a traditional network connection to the cloud would be just buying a network link and buying a network port and connecting in sd wan you could end up paying for license cost in a traditional environment where you could end up buying a firewall in sd wan you could end up paying license costs for turning up your security modules all reports analytics may not be free they may entail license costs anil rightly said you've got to be careful now you know you would have you would have bought a box for 10 meg you would have paid a license for the 10 meg tomorrow you update the bandwidth to 20 meg and you suddenly find out oh this is not working it will not you've got to upgrade that license port cost also you've got to be really careful all there right so one is when you are designing the solution as to what features you need second along with the service provider or the oem you've got to make a list of this cost covers what what elements are covered and you've got to be also knowing if not covering but at least be aware of yourself that in the near future if my roadmap is 1 2 3 4 5 what are my additional license costs that i will need to incur else it will come as a shock or it will come as okay deployed but not working it will not work till the time you do not enable those licenses all right so cool. be very very careful there yeah i think fantastic points there abhijit and and you know i'll just recap all the stuff that you spoken so clearly again it starts from business look at business needs uh let's focus on on what we're really trying to achieve we'll look at the technology networking is going to be important in in getting it right i think uh especially the value that sd van is bringing on the table now uh while we work in more decentralized environments distributed it environments is clearly there i think that's established uh my closing note again we have a couple of minutes uh so chris adil and abhijit each one of you uh what do you think uh would be the way forward post covid right uh is this demand here to stay and if yes uh, any closing comment uh, maybe in a line of how do you think sd wan will be post the covid environment uh, we are hoping 2021 is a is a better year for us uh, and and that's what i would call as a post covid environment right so maybe anand you want to go first and just just a closing note you know, so i see you know, sd wan is going to continue and then rock you know the industry to be very honest you know adoption I see definitely going to increase because of the benefits it provides you and the flexibility it provides you. Uh, in terms of, you know, uh, I don't see still, you know, that uh, any large organization, corporation, 
uh, you know running uh, across geographies and con continents may adopt it you know in one single year across all the location it will be you know a uh, uh, spread over kind of journey for such large organization and and uh, uh, there is another thing which i think personally you know that uh, we are not talking yet uh, you know uh, network as a service i see that as a concept going to come and evolve where you know a service provider giving you all services as a service and that includes you know as demand as one component uh, you know under your network offering so i see that as demand continue to drop uh, and then adoption will increase and uh, because it provides you the benefit you know uh, for the cost you know you are investing in that okay abhi it's same closing note uh, one one closing note sentence from you as well yeah so so you know so over over the couple of you know la you know couple of years and over the kind of experiences that i've gathered i've kind of coined this term called the pptta p for people p for process t for tools and technology and a for yeah, I mean, can, you, can you move your mic a bit that's an interesting point and we can't hear you yeah yeah is it is it better now is it better yeah, now I... yeah so i said over the over the years i've kind of you know uh, over the experience that i've gained i've kind of coined this term i call it ppta generally you will not be able to google it ppta stands for the double p stands for people process t stands for tools and technology the a stands for analytics and automation in today's world if any of these four pillars are missing whatever you have adopted will not last it will face issues SDWAN as a platform, as a technology, I think has the capability to cut across and deliver across all these four pillars of PPTA. You know, it can it can bring you people benefits, it can bring you process benefits. It definitely is a tool and technology with with a very advanced and a futuristic outlook. Automation and analytics in today's digital world, if you don't have it, you are already dead. I mean, forget about living, right? So. I think everyone is here to stay, and I see a lot of large enterprises uh, across industry domains. Uh, initial, you know, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is retail, whether it is logistics, banking, healthcare. I've seen a lot of this kind of embracing everyone, and and we all see the benefit, right? It's it's how internally the everyone is kind of discussed and adopted and understood. More importantly. The moment you start with SDWAN as a cost-cutting initiative, I think it's going to fail. Right? You've got to massage it a bit properly, present it a bit properly. There are tangible benefits. There are intangible benefits. Be very aware of it, present it, discuss it, accept it accordingly. I think the journey is on, and it kind of gives you a very secure and robust connectivity to the cloud. Cloud is here to stay. Anil mentioned cloud is growing. Cloud will grow. Uh, different organizations will embrace cloud in different frames and different formats. depending upon their own their business requirements but secured connectivity through sd wan sase is here to stay i think this will continue to grow excellent excellent fantastic points i think so we will close the session here we will address a q and a as well from the audience so uh some great points cloud is here to stay convergence will happen business needs are there network is important uh challenges are there hidden costs are there and that's why you need to go granular and plan your implementation effectively right so fantastic i i like to thank everyone here um and and probably have a good day thank you very much thank you thank you nishil have a nice day thank you nishil thank you anil have a good day bye 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 bye